प्लीज आई एम टू दैट थैंक यू सर डन good evening everyone present here this evening on behalf of the core team mental health webinar series and the organizer the department of psychology the american college madurai and the co partners madras school of social work chennai red pond educational and psychological research center madurai hello pond counseling center madurai ms chellamuthu institute of mental health and rehabilitation madurai and psycho oncological association turkey i welcome you all to today's session the participants and also the resource person and today we have our own dr suresh kumar murugesan and today is our 402nd session and he is here to talk about his experiences and insights about intelligence testing we are aware that there are many many intelligences and that has been dealt by our suresh kumar sir and today he is going to let us know how can we test intelligence to deal with the situations of the future so we are very happy to have you here again thank you for being here and now the session is over to you sir Uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra. Very good evening, one hundred percent here. I'm really happy to uh, be again here for sharing my bit of learning. As you all aware that uh, uh, there are many intelligence components we were discussed in this uh, webinar series itself, and you may aware about that how to know one's intelligence also. My question is here before begin my. presentation i have many many questions in my mind i try to find answer for those questions and i am going to share answer i found in different resources with you all the number one is about why we have to measure intelligence okay why we have to measure intelligence and second one is how it can be measured why we are not using the term assessment for personality and other personality uh, other psychological components we use the term called assessment when it comes to intelligence we are saying that measurement why there is a difference and next one is intelligence is uh, uh, constant or dynamic is static or dynamic if it is unstatic how we come to know that if it is undynamic why it is undynamic and what are the precautions we learn we have to learn for knowing one's intelligence so these are the uh, questions in front of me i try to find answer from the different sources i am going to share with you all uh, those things and and uh, 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 intelligent test is uh, uh, mostly those who are aware about it psychometric or psychological testing they may aware about it what is intelligent testing a test is something a device or instrument used by the researcher to collect the data generally and intelligent test is something a designed by the psychologist or psychometrician to measure that uh, 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 to measure the capacity of an individual how they can able to learn and how they uh, deal with the new situations so so the, the ultimate aim of intelligent test is uh, to know our capacity and ability uh, like there are many many abilities we are having one of the abilities and abstraction and how quickly we learn how we uh, deal with the different situations so if we can able to measure those things that comes under intelligent testing and and uh, when we see the intelligent testing mostly the transformation happens from different occasions the main focus of intelligent testing is to quantify that to quantify the cognitive abilities of an individual uh, mostly and very rarely the other components like emotions and the behavior like psychomotor components were um, uh, analyzed or these components were included in intelligent component generally there are uh, uh, many experts who devised an intelligent testing they prepared an protocol the rules and regulations for preparing intelligent testing how we have to administer and what kind of score we will get 
and how we can utilize those codes for identifying the IQ. So these things were discussed. And, and in the standardized assessment, we can see that they, they found that the individuals are deeper, even the same age group, the same family members, the same community, they found that there is an individual differences. And, and uh, there are common abilities also, they, they found it as a general abilities we need to identify for intelligence components. For example, the memory. The memory is one of the important components for intelligence. And earlier, there is a thought about that a person who knows most of the information in their memory, they thought the person is the most intelligent person. And processing the information, how quickly the person processing it. And, and the speed of giving the answer for the questions. And, and the language usage, how, how they are using the language. And whether the person is good at numerical components, whether they can able to distinguish that auditory and visual information and these things were sub, some of the sub components of intelligent testing and and there were uh, uh, transformation were happened in that psychological assessment especially for intelligent testing and and in the beginning they used to find that the person how quickly answer for the question that were considered as an intelligence and like uh, how information the person who can store and then retrieve from the memory that were considered as an intelligence, like uh, verbal information, uh, numerical uh, data, how they are handling it, how quickly they give the answer for those things, and that also comes under the testing. Uh, as mostly when you Google it and when you search it, you can find out the standard test. These are the most commonly used by the psychiatrist, uh, psychologists or psychometricians in clinical setting and non-clinical settings. One is standard being an intelligent scale and another one is versus scale. Versus has on two versions, one is for children and another one is for uh, adolescent, uh, adult and uh, adolescents. And when we look back to the history of uh, IQ testing, as you all know that the first person who made an attempt to devise and test for measuring intelligence is an Albert Bene. 90, 1901, he made an attempt. That was the first test. That was the first test to measure intelligence. And still now we are using that is called the Stanford Bene Intelligent Test. Stanford is an university and Bene is the person who developed the first intelligent testing and it was revised in different occasions and still now we are using it. And later, after uh, uh, Albert Bene, there is an one more person called Charles Spearman. Two-factor theory. He said that there are specific factors and uh, general factors are there. The concept of general intelligence, and we have to measure those general men mental ability. The cognitive task was introduced by Charles Spearman only. He is very good at uh, statistics also. And, and that was the second intelligent test developed by him. And nowadays we are using a uh, uh, number of tests. And as we all know that the huge requirement or importance was given to I IQ testing during the World War One and Two. The World War One, they tried to recruit more and more people and further they developed an instrument IQ testing. So one test is on, that, that test was developed by psychologist Robert Yates. Army Alpha, Army Beta, still now we can so actually, if you go to any kind of uh, uh, army or any kind of intelligent uh, posting, this, this test will be administered. It may be on revised version. For recruitment purpose, they developed. And in the 1950s, it is very popular. And, and you can say that the, if you have training on uh, David Wessler's IQ testing alone, you can earn a lot of money. I can say that uh, there, is an, uh, there is a dedicated skill set required for using that restless adult intelligence skill. It has many subscales and there are, when you are trying to use each subscales, you need the expertise in those components. Otherwise, you may not get that exact IQ of the person. And, and the uh, Stanford BNA scale, uh, I, actually it is an American adaptation of the original version developed by Albert Bene. And the BNA developed instrument was revised by Simon. Okay, and which was published by the Stanford Bene test was published in the year uh, 1916 by 
Levis Terman, who is the person responsible for IQ, the formula. He is a professor from that uh, Stanford University. He revised the instrument and he adapted that original French version into English. And, and you can see the transformation and how many years which was revised in 1937, 1960, 1973, 1986, and 2003. And still now, and, and this test is very widely used, a children's age two and above. And, and this test mainly intended for uh, measuring IQ of children. And, and this is, what are the main components of the Stanford Vena Intelligence Test? It consists of age graded uh, series of problems. For example, for two years age, what kind of problem the person can be able to solve? And arithmetic, as, as I said, the cognitive component, arithmetic, how quickly the person can be able to solve the mathematical problems? And how extend the person who can be able to hold the memory? And vocabulary skills. So these were the important subcomponents of Stanford being an intelligent test, I can say, which was originally developed in the year 1902 in French version. Later it was translated into Ameri English for America in the year 1916. And even up to 2003, it was modified and revised. And I don't know, up to 2003, no one has made on any uh, revision. Uh, probably they may make an attempt to revise those things. And it is because why they are not revised in the year 2004, the multiple intelligence and the Sternberg triarchy theories were introduced. They said that the intelligence is not a only single entity, it is not a one component. There are different types of intelligence. That's why they may not be revised, I think so. But logically, I'm connecting. And, and, and now that most importance was given to that uh, multiple intelligences. Now we'll move on to that. Intelligent testing, it will measure your cognitive ability. It will not give your IQ score. IQ score means intelligent quotient intelligence quotient and this concept was introduced by uh, a german psychologist william stern he is the person who introduced but later that concept was adapted by uh, uh, levi sturman he adapted that term and he said that uh, he is the person who originally translated that original version of standard bna test into uh, english version term levi sturman and how they are calculating IQ score. And you all know that there is a formula, a person's mental age is to his chronological age and multiplied by 100. So that is a formula for calculating that IQ score. For example, for example, if a child of a 10 year old, a child of 10 year old has a mental age of 12 and the, abrupt, the, uh, the possible IQ score is on 120. Okay, 12 by 10 into 100 is an 120 is an IQ score. It is above average level of IQ score. And we are aware that and a score of 100 in that distribution, it is an average IQ score. Okay, below 100, below average. And above 100, we can say that above average. 30 minutes. And, and uh, when, when we calculate that IQ score by using that uh, formula and the distribution, you can see here, uh, uh, here is the frequency distribution of IQ scores. See, uh, whatever the score, if you take, it may be on um, uh, performance test, if you, it may be on uh, objective type or it may be um, non-verbal test, picture-oriented test, whatever the test, if you take up, you will get a raw score. It's not IQ score. And many people are confusing that if you have the scale, you can able to have the IQ score. No, you will get a raw score. And for example, for RAV and standard progressive matrices, the number of items is on 60. The maximum score you will get only 60. And that raw score, if you convert into st st mental age, mental age, and when you calculate, you will get an IQ distribution. And if your IQ scores are distributed in this category, you see here, and 70 and below, usually they called us on mentally retarded. Earlier it was called as a mentally retarded. Now they are calling as an intellectual disabled, intellectual disabled. And a score between uh, uh, 70 and 85, it is called borderline. They can, they can be educated. And 85 to 100 is on below average and 100 to 115 is called above average. 
and a score 150 into 30 is called superior in intelligence and above 130 something they call that very superior or gifted in nature gifted children and and this were the distributions you can see how many populations will be there for in the gifted only 2.2 percentage if 100 people are there in a classroom definitely there are two persons if it is randomly distributed two persons are gifted in nature and two persons are they may fall under below average level this is the understanding and and uh, this distribution will help us to know that the individual differences and most of the students in the classroom are in any kind of situations or any kind of places we can see average level of intelligence people are 68 percentage average level of intelligence people are 68 percentage and you can see above average you can find out 13 percentage and gifted only two percentage and and uh, there are many tests are available and here you can see and here you can see uh, some of the commonly used intelligent tests and, and these were the cognitive assessment system and i would like to say that these tests were given much importance up to 2003 after that the notion for under giving priority to these kind of intelligent testing is comes down it is because of the introduction of multiple intelligence and priority theory introduced by sternberg and and these two people broken the notion the people who had about the intelligence that intelligence is an only one core component and there are it has many sub components but the, these people said that no no intelligence itself there are different types and and before that so these were the very popular tests you can know that Kaufman assessment battery for children standard being intelligence scale still now it is widely used one and universal non-verbal intelligence test can you uh, name that universal non-verbal test raven standard progress matrices is on culture fair culture free test but even irrespective of developed and developing countries you can administer and you can be able to know that intelligence and versus adult intelligence scale and versus intelligence scale for children these two scales are very popular and and that can be some of the tests are performance some of the tests sub, sub tests are uh, verbal in component and uh, another one is Woodcock Johnson test of cognitive abilities so these were the widely used intelligent testing as per my knowledge and I would like to say that if a children with uh, uh, for example special children are there whether we can apply these intelligent testing if you ask me no why the reason is most of the tests here are verbal tests most of the tests here are verbal tests and the, the special children even the age of 10 plus they will not read and give the answers so what is the appropriate test you have to look for that to know about the exact iq level of the special children you have to go for different tests there is one more test as per my knowledge second so form board test it is like a, a block the colored blocks will be there they have to take and then they have to place in that appropriate places and that, that is in sequence only nine nine designs will be there in front of them they have to take one by one in a sequence if they change the order their iq level iq score will comes down and if they take much of time more than two seconds for one, one component and their iq score will comes down so that is the way they are finding out intelligence of special population and and for special population how to measure iq there are uh, um, um, certain institutions which were very specialized in those components you can uh, take a training on, on such uh, institutions as per my knowledge nipmet nipmet in chennai muttukad is there they are uh, having specialized test for that or else you can um, uh, there are uh, multinational companies like pearson and parson are having that test you can procure and the cost of the test are comes down earlier it is isn't very costly restless if you go to the it becomes one point one lakh and twenty thousand and and some of the tests recently i when i noticed in private uh, uh, psychometrics uh, uh, providers i found that in three thousand you can able to get uh, uh, batia's battery batia's battery is another performance oriented test you can administer but it has on many sub tests but each sub test you can take it some of the sub test will uh, measure only spatial intelligence some of the test will measure your uh, memory as i said cognitive abilities only it will measure uh, uh, cognitive ability or mental ability only intelligence measure only these components not more than that and and uh, where these assessments were widely used 
mostly uh, when you know the history of uh, intelligent testing uh, in the year 1990 the school teachers were struggled a lot the reason is during that time there is no discrimination based on their individual difference or ability level of the children so even the children with the low iq score were also admitted and high score were high scored IQ, intelligent score people were admitted in the same classroom and it is very difficult for the teacher to cater these two populations and they insisted to the higher authorities can you please make some arrangement we have to class group these students for example i am the parent of low iq children just imagine that if the teachers are saying that i'm going to put your children into that low group student and the parents will how can you say that my children is poor in intelligence and and that that was the thing and they need a something or a benchmark to say that these people are having high level of iq and these people are having low level of iq there the french government requested can you please devise an instrument to know the individual differences are based on the cognitive ability of the children that that's the way this uh, uh, intelligent testing concepts were evolved okay and and uh, here you can see education assessment and placement mostly when you look at that neat examination jee gate examination or uh, there are many exam entrance examinations are there now for education assessment they are directly or indirectly they are measuring your iq only when you look at the sub components you can find out I'll, I'll tell you for net examination, those who are fighting for higher education, uh, uh, professorship and for research, there are many sub, sub tests are there. Your communication, your mathematical reasoning, inductive reasoning, and reading comprehension, and uh, current knowledge about environment, current knowledge about education system, and your aptitude. Aptitude is nothing but your cognitive abilities. So these things work. Knowingly or unknowingly, you are taking up intelligent testing only. Ability testing, that is your aptitude, achievement, and intelligent testing, all measures, main, main priority is know your abilities only, you know, potentials. And these things were widely used for placement also. I remember once uh, um, uh, I visited uh, Taramani for uh, career Mela. I think almost 200 to, 200 and, uh, 200 to 300 companies will be there. And in the entrance, you have to take an aptitude test based on the aptitude score and you are eligible to enter some of the uh, 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 place you can go and get your face-to-face uh, -face interview. The aptitude test, test they will take. If you score more than 70, some of the uh, company in the uh, entrance itself, they will say that if you score more than this point, you are welcome. And if not, you, can, you are not eligible to uh, get into the face-to-face -face interview. So, so for that purpose, we can use IQ test and for, intel for intellectual disability, if you want to know that as a yearly, it was MR, mentally retarded. Now you cannot say that uh, some people, as you said, there are many parents will not accept that their children are intellectual disability. But for knowing those things, for diagnosing and for that assessment, we can use IQ test. And for cognitive researchers, and uh, there are the interesting thing is that I will give one example for cognitive researchers here. Uh, the concept of emotional intelligence emerged because of this cognitive research. What they have done in a company, they given priority only to that the person who are having high level of IQ score. And another company, they are not given any importance to high level of IQ score. They given that priority whether the person having that emotional connection with the company, emotional bonding with other members. And what they found that. In a company where they recruited all the high level of intelligence people are selfish in nature, they are found that more conflict among the employees. And in a place, the average level of IQ people and they are having emotional connection, the performance and productivity are also increased. And later there are many companies where realize that, okay, it is subcomponent. Now they are giving much importance to that. Now they are uh, replacing that emotion. Uh, IQ into EQ. We are giving priority to that emotional quotient. So that these cognitive researches where we can use IQ test. And job, for example, if you want to go for um, um, vertical promotions, for that IQ scores will be very useful for the person. For example, Hachas in a company, he is managing more than 
thousand employees, it is very difficult to you whom they have to give the priority. It is very difficult. Now they are saying that 360 degree evaluation. And one of the components, it is mostly these 360 degree. And you can find out majority that will measure that person's ability or potential, the IQ components. And if you want to know one's memory and speed and attention, and these and IQ tests are very useful for the person. If you want to know that attention deficit are there, you can able to take this test. So these were the applications. And the beginning, I asked a question. Why in intelligence, they are using the term measurement rather than assessment. But in other places, you can find out in personality and other come, they say that assessment. But here you cannot see mostly the measurement. I think measurement is on more specific. Assessment is on not more specific. And you can able to quantify exactly in measurement. In assessment, you cannot be able to quantify. It isn't you can quali qualitatively you can say that. In qualitatively, you can be able to say that. Okay. So uh, the measurement is we can exactly say that the IQ score of an individual. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then uh, uh, I think we all know that intelligent testing is very important for uh, our growth and development. We have to understand that even if you like it or not. If there is a way we can improve the intelligence, no, but we can, if you are smart enough, you know that what are the components in intelligent test we are measuring and you can develop those components. And, and uh, if you are uh, smart enough, so these are the components you have to give priority in future for any kind of competitive examination, one is your language skills. And second one is your mathematical skills. Even if you like it or not, you have to give priority to that mathematical skills and your memory. And mostly after that uh, technology, uh, smartphones and other devices in your hand, and many people are lost their memory. I still remember when there is no uh, smartphone or uh, mobile phone in hands, I used to memorize more than 150 numbers when we are having that uh, hand Landline mobile number. Now, after the mobile came, I don't know what's the number of my father. And, and it is very sad. Even sometime I forget my number. I have to check my number in the phone only. So memory level comes down and processing speed also another subcomponent and our reasoning abilities and visual spatial processing are also subcomponents we need to develop when you uh, improve your uh, ability. Suppose a person who scores on low IQ scores. Okay, below 100, we can say that below average. Below average and less than 70, we can label them as an intellectual disability or they are uh, high chances of their learning disability. And, and we can find out that um, what are the areas they have to um, I think they have to focus on that adaptive skill screening, whether the person can able to lead their life daily life and we can test the uh, blood test and uh, mental health screening and these things we need to take up. Even these things were done in the prenatal screening also. They, they find out that, okay, your children are high chances are that there may be intellectual disability. And now that there are many advanced screening tests we can able to make. And higher IQ scores, yes, there are a lot of benefits are there. Extreme intelligence people are looking for many, many companies for coding, especially computer coding. And if you are high IQ, you can easily make it. You can make a smart thing. And, and you not only that, you, you can break the stereotyping. Most of the people who are successful, they are having high IQ. They think differently. They are more creative in nature. Okay. And, and uh, at the same time, and there are uh, uh, potential pitfalls also there in that IQ testing. <coughs> um, uh, one is that discrimination. Mostly the main purpose of using uh, this IQ test to discriminate, okay, these persons are disabled. If the test is not there, there won't be any discrimination, am I right? And one more thing, validity. Not all the experts, they agree with that. The intelligence measure is a common component of all the people. It is very from person to person. As I said in my previous presentation that intelligence, the concept itself, there are different ideas having by different people in different cultures. So the validity of IQ testing, there are still, there are many people are not agree with that. And reliability of the test who were developed, 
and it may be developed in western country and it may not be appropriate to that eastern countries like india and asian countries and these were the potential pitfalls when you are using that and there are many factors are there for our your iq one is our uh, whether if you are having that where you are taking your education there are many education government education or private institution why many people parents are sending their children to private education they know that and they are having the quality uh, education content and they, their iq will be better and that nutritious food item and and uh, even if they are not think about that what we are going to get for their food they may not think about how to solve the problem in other company so nutrition and the culture where you can see there are many many people say that tamil people and uh, indian people are good at mathematics it is because of the culture and the environment where you belong to and which, which is given much priority in that area that that has an important factor for our intelligence and overall health condition and medical also uh, influence your uh, uh, iq and and uh, there are even uh, this is a, my final slide uh, uh, there are many criticism also there for intelligent testing as i said on earlier it is for discrimination and there is no validity also why there is a discrimination see these uh, iq tests are favored for uh, white people and middle class and it, it doesn't bias about uh, uh, the black people in general i'm saying the culture wise and and lower economic status people they believe that they are not having the iq score because when you have the training on particular company you can perform well what about the so poor socio economic status if they are not having the training they cannot perform and how you can say that that is an intelligence so that that is a, one of the important criticism and 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 the ethnicity and gender gender were uh, main discrimination there are many people think that male are very good at it spatial intelligence naturally they are good at it and you see most of the intelligent testing spatial intelligence is one of the sub component and that area when it comes female will not perform better and 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 so that that discrimination is also there and still there are many people who oh, you are not having the equal when the two persons are measuring you must have that equal chance to all the person but that opportunity is not there in intelligent testing and age group as we all know that uh, fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence and it is vary from different age group and that we cannot able to control on that so this is another thing and uh, uh, many people there are believe that they have the abilities and when it comes to the reality i know that uh, when uh, tet examination were introduced i can say the teacher eligibility test in tamil nadu 6 lakhs teachers were appear for the examination but actually nearly 200 uh, 2000 people only qualified 6 lakhs people who were appear for the examination only 2000 were qualified and the minimum mark is only 35 percentage not 50 percentage and they said that and the test which is devised is not measuring in the teaching ability teacher eligibility test you have to measure the teacher eligibility but actually it measured other components for example the teacher may be mathematics he need not to know about the language importance and and the teacher eligibility test gives 30 percent in regard to language and this person may not perform well so these were the and there are many criticisms are there and it creates more anxiety among the people who score less and and especially when you take up the test and what's the score they may not reveal that so these were some of the criticism i hope i i, I gave you Uh, insight on uh, uh, intelligent testing thank, thank you so much for uh, listening to me if you have any questions please let me know i try to give your answer for the questions over to dr chandra so wonderful session sir i would like to give it to veena today because she is present here okay, veena okay, over to you for the q and a i think she is not here yeah yes yes i found her name Dr. Veena, are you available? I think she's not there. Okay, sir. Fine. I just saw her name, so I thought like uh, let her take it now. Okay. okay. Sir, wonderful session again. Now I have become more curious to test my IQ, sir. I don't know where <laughs> I stand. So okay. it is really true that over the technology development, we are losing our innate quality or our own memory system. So I think uh, we should be more aware of it and like, try to keep it active. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for enlightening us on IQ tests and also like uh, differentiating the, between the 
IQ measurements and also the personality assessments and uh, uh, definitely the participants have learned a lot about IQ tests and also the assessments and the various tests that are available and now is the time for question and answers so participants if you have any queries you could put in the chat box or you could unmute yourself and ask the questions yeah I can find one question in the chat box it is by Anita um, Thank you for your compliment. And uh, if there is any possibility in future for developing culture-specific intelligence testing, yes, it is possible. I would like to say that the first test for intelligent testing began in the year mental ability testing in the 1901 and 1916, and two, up to 2003, the same test was revised. Culture-specific tests, if we develop, I can say that certain culture they are believing that. A person having the capacity to make others happy as an intelligent person. And in another community, another culture, they believe that a person who quickly respond, give the answer for the question that they consider as an intelligence. So yes, we can able to uh, uh, develop, we can able to develop, but we cannot be able to globalize. For example, if you take a test of uh, uh, a person having the capacity to make others love, a person can have the ability of uh, creating the music and these cannot be applied and we cannot compare with other uh, cultural components. So that is why they want to be universal ability testing. Universally when you say that on, we are moving towards science. The science is wherever you go the same kind of answer we have to get. So culture specific tests we can create but we must give much importance to that objective and global context, culture free, culture fair test we can create. And and uh, we need to spend, I can say that, um, uh, the structure of intellect, SOI, it is the best instrument for a global component. Irrespective of your uh, culture, you can take the test, it measures more than 150 factors in a single test and we can able to know that the person's ability component and which area the person need to develop and based on the culture and, and these culture people are Asian countries, they are specialized in this area and we can find out another other area, they, they are specialized in other component, that, that clarity we can able to get when we administer a structure of intellect. Yes, SO is the best instrument, I can say that. Thank you, Indu. Yes. Any other questions from the Palestinians or? Sir, um, yeah. once you do the uh, intelligence test, uh, yeah. so when can one repeat it? Is the test going to give the values which would be like, I mean, like, which would be sta uh, the same for uh, a particular period of time? Or can be repeated because sometimes uh, le through learning people do acquire knowledge. So yeah, you, you are. I you think I it? think it is a more diligent question. I'm really appreciate you. I would like to say that that the one of the criticism is uh, if you are smart enough, if you know that what are the sub component of intelligent test, if you give the training on those components, we can able to make the IQ score very high. And and uh, uh, these. Uh, uh, in front of that the person who was developing the IQ testing and they need to consider and where we have to focus. For example, if I take the test right now, very next time if I take Raven standard progressive matrix, they are saying that this should not be administered within 15 days. Yes. Before 15 days, we are not supposed to do take the test because the person may aware about it, what is the right answer for them. When they're scoring, they come to know that, okay, this answer is wrong and they may go for the high chances are that their answer may increase. Okay. And when they were aware about it, okay, these were the area they focused. I, I can say one example. Mostly, the people who were failed in the first attempt in any kind of competitive examination, they know that the weak area in that particular thing, and they will come and focus on those area and very next time they will qualify. Likewise, that can be high chances are there in IQ testing also and, and it is in the hands of that person, they have to change the pattern and, and one time if they are asking that difficulty level they have to increase. And the second time if the person is taking a particular percentage of difficulty level of the IQ testing must be increased. 
Thank you, sir. No, because we, we often see that happening in many of the institutions whenever mm -hmm. there is any exam. So they do it once they fail and they take a retest. <laughs> so they will score it in, to the maximum level. <laughs> so that happens. Uh, sir, you are on mute. Yeah, yes, if it, you are uh, right. And uh, sometime you can see now, some people's IQ score comes down when they take the retest. <laughs> I, I still remember the first test the score may be 60. I can say um, those who are writing for computer examinations. And they may score 60 percentage, one person they may come down. Next time they write and they will score only 54. And, and they spend one year of studies for that and the score comes, that means the difficulty level of the questions is increased. And, and that's why the criticism of that cannot uh, uh, have the concrete component when you take, for example, sugar level, random test they will take. Like intelligence also, you have to take a random test, one verbal test, one non-verbal, one performance, and you can call it, and an average will be your uh, probability of your IQ score. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank you. And, That's and I, yeah, I can read one of the inputs from uh, Anita. Uh, one request for the future session, please throw some light on Indian contribution of the world psychology, including indigenous practice currently being followed here. And I really appreciate your uh, input, Ms. Anita. Actually, uh, when I was submitted my proposal for my PDF, postdoctoral research fellow, uh, for uh, anxiety, fear, phobia, and grief, before these psychotherapy and counseling were uh, introduced 100 years before 100 years these kind of problem also our people face and some of the people they overcome without knowing the name of the strategy they adapted and that was the aim i made and uh, i submitted my proposal unfortunately due to some uh, uh, family commitment and other reasons i couldn't take up the research and yes we can able to make and and only thing is I can say the number of researches which, which is happening in India which were not published. That is why we are not uh, 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 make it that these components are there in our culture. Yes, it is available and definitely it will be considered in future and indigenous technology things will be included later. That's why when we are planning for stress management, uh, I had an idea we will go for only uh, home uh, lifestyle strategy, granny therapy, home therapy. These were included, we found that more than 30 approaches. There are many perspectives out there, and there are people saying that only scientific based component. Yes, this thing can be done. If they are done a research, even psychology has having evidences only last 50 years. Before that, there is no much evidences. And likewise, when they take up it, they are aware about it. When they take it in scientific method, definitely we can able to give more evidence for indigenous method, and that can be included in coming days. And like minded people are they, they get they, they join, and probably we can able to bring it to the uh, global level. Yes. Yes. There are many forums also that uh, 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 really encourage Indian psychology as well. There are many forums yes, and, yes, yes. And, uh, is and, uh, and I would like to say here, Indian psychology, I agree. And some people, they are, uh, uh, the belief is totally different from evidence, the truthfulness. See, belief is okay, but truth is totally different. When some of the belief, they are not when they are looking into that, they uh, pray for the belief system what they are having. So that's why we have to be very careful when we are uh, exploring in uh, Indian perspective. And we have to come up with more evidence-based, not belief-based. Okay, that we need to uh, give. And one more uh, thing is, um, uh, there are, you can take in uh, uh, scientific researches also, there are some people are smart enough, they can able to fake it. Now, if you give me data, by seeing the data itself, I will say that whether it is an, the person collected in a real population or he cooked the data in the computer. Yes, we can able to find out. It is because experiences that need to be developed by the person and we can able to find uh, the, the distinction between indigenous and other populations. And can you explain about the IQ test on children below 10 years? Yes, uh, as I said, no, stand in a test. That is the ideal test for children. Still now it is used. And I can say that 100 years we are using a single test. It is a standboard beginning uh, intelligence scale. And, and that is a more ideal for 10 years old. But for children with special needs, 
and these tests will not be suitable that is the only thing i will like to highlight and for that there are certain uh, performance oriented tests are there you can you have to aware of those tests and you have to use those tests for measuring the it So that's with the question and answers, I think. And uh, yes. thanks for patiently answering all the questions. <laughs> and uh, now it's the time for vote of thanks. So I request Dr. Chandra to please do the honors. Thank you, Veena. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, Suresh, sir, what should I say about thanking you? You are a source <laughs> of ideas, sink of experience. And you have beautifully delivered and uh, given some insights about uh, intelligence testing. That was really wonderful. And uh, I would say it was just an idea to know what is what, sir. That was useful as an information also. So we wish to have and listen more from you in the sessions that are going to come as well. Thank you so much. And I thank all the participants who are with us today on this Sunday, besides their uh, family time. And I thank all the participants who have been with us throughout this journey. And uh, I also thank uh, the secretary of this series, Dr. Tavman Christopher, who is also an important person behind this happening. And I congratulate and thank every organizer of the series and also special thanks to our core team for staying together to make this happen. Thank you one and all. See you tomorrow on another session, same time, same link. Until then, stay tuned. Bye-bye and good night.